Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to another episode of the Tech Blog Rider podcast. Now, last week we recorded an episode in Universal Studios Car Park in Florida. Today I thought we'd mix things up again. I'm recording this intro from Manchester Airport as I prepare to fly off and cover the Adobe Digital Summit in Vegas. But before we do that, I want to tackle a serious subject today. Because there's now a growing number of sensors and cameras in every city. Our entire critical infrastructure is now always online. Meanwhile, there's a realisation that entire cities are vulnerable to cyber attacks. For example, an attack to a power grid could plunge an entire city into darkness. And security is a key challenge for smart cities now, stemming from a massive proliferation of data collected in secure systems that can be hijacked. However, I recently came across a company called CryptoMove, which is essentially a decentralised moving target data vault. Now, they believe that a moving target defence is a complete game changer. So today's guest is going to help us make sense of it all. So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to San Francisco so we can speak with the CEO of CryptoMove. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Mike. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Absolutely. My name's Mike Burstein. I'm the CEO and founder of CryptoMove, and we're a data protection startup based in Silicon Valley focused on protecting data with uh, moving target defense in distributed and decentralized environments like smart cities. Now, before we dive in and talk about crypto move, I think it's quite important that we highlight and understand the problem that it solves. So can you tell me a little bit more about why security is a key challenge for smart cities? And do you have any examples that will help listeners understand these challenges? Absolutely. So right now, all across the world, there are initiatives in many, many cities to modernize and digitize their infrastructure, to take things like streetlights and connect them to each other via the internet or parking meters or cameras. And this is all part of what's called a smart city uh, global initiative and global trends. What happens, however, is as we know with the internet, once things start getting connected, they become vulnerable to attack. And and this is a huge challenge, especially as we start to break the barrier between the digital world and the physical world in cities. And so some examples where um, things have gone wrong include in Dallas, Texas last year, at one point hackers broke into the emergency siren system, set off over 150 emergency sirens uh, for hours and hours, which disrupted residents, it overwhelmed 911 operators and uh, made it you know, a, a total mess in the city. And this is just one example you can imagine as cities start developing applications for self-driving cars and for uh, electricity and water and smart grids, the types of attacks on, on those systems can be devastating um, and uh, cause serious uh, damage as well as potentially risks uh, to people's lives. So over the years, do you think authorities have never actually stopped and thought about how the growing number of sensors, cameras and autonomous connected devices that can all actually be compromised and leave and actually leave an entire city quite vulnerable, can't it? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good question. You know, it typically with any type of new technology, the primary driver is to increase efficiencies and speed and get things done. You know, for instance, in Barcelona, they installed smart water meters and it saved them over $50 million a year. And so that's usually what starts these initiatives and what people are thinking about, what the authorities are thinking about. We've talked to many CIOs of cities and CTOs at, via our work at CryptoMove and what they tell us is they typically they don't have a security person on staff. They're typically unaware of even the threats that may exist for these smart devices, sensors, and cameras, and they're just trying to get a handle on it. I think that some cities are starting to understand that security is a high priority, but just the way the world works, it's typically one of the last things that gets thought about. 
It really is. And I think, but, but I do think that everybody's waking up to security now. And I love, this is where you guys came on my radar because Crypto Move is aiming to revolutionise smart city data protection. But can you just help set the scene and help listeners understand the exact problem that you're attempting to solve here and how you're going to do it with Crypto Move? Absolutely. So if you imagine a smart city that has sensors and cameras all spread out around the city, the problem there is how do you secure the data that's being generated by all of these systems at the edge. And it's a unique problem that isn't faced today because typically today data is stored centrally in data centers or even in cloud environments. But in a city, it completely changes the data model. The data is now distributed, it's decentralized, and it often contains very valuable information or is the vector of attack to go in and take over a system. And so what CryptoMove does is it protects data in these edge environments. What CryptoMove software does, and we've actually been working with some federal agencies in the United States, like the Department of Homeland Security, which uh, they've recently um, published some uh, press about our work, to protect data in these types of distributed environments. The way CryptoMove does that is to take data split it up into fragments, encrypt the fragments, and continuously move them around. So you could think of a smart city with all these sensors and cameras with this layer of crypto move over the top of it to ensure that the data itself is continuously moving, hopping, re-encrypting with different keys. And from an attacker's perspective, what makes it much more difficult for them to pull off their attack is that they have a harder time identifying the data, mapping it out. And if they steal or exfiltrate or try to destroy the data, perhaps with ransomware, they're just getting at little bits and pieces and they're not able to take down uh, the whole system. And so that's what CryptoMove is doing. And we call this moving target defense, moving target data protection. So can I take you back in time and ask you what the story is behind Crypto Move and ask you about the catalyst that led to you following this path and how you actually turned this vision into a reality and went out to solve these problems? Absolutely. So Crypto Move got started uh, quite a bit ago. and Our company was in stealth mode, quietly doing R&D on our technology for about five years. The catalyst to that was actually my co-founder and the CTO of the company, Boris, who had a long, decades-long experience with distributed systems. And after his last startup where he worked was acquired by Cisco, he left Cisco and started to develop his own um, technology around distributed programming concepts. As he was doing that, he essentially accidentally invented CryptoMove as a way to test it out. And the technology, the idea was so novel that he decided to productize and prototype it. And Boris happens to be my dad. So we're a family business. And as my dad is working on all these concepts, meanwhile, where I was is I had a startup. Then I ended up becoming a lawyer and started doing data security and cybercrime protection for companies like Google, Amazon, Microsoft, going after bad guys. And when Boris, my dad, needed a business partner, I quit my job about two years ago. And we started the company. And what happened is we started talking to people and we said, look, we have this technology. It splits data up. It moves it around. That's what we know. We know it's very powerful. But what we don't know is how can it be used and where would it be the most impactful? And so what we figured out in about a year of talking to hundreds and hundreds of security experts, um, cities and, and other um you know, industry experts is that this technology can be very valuable to protect data in untrusted environments, like in the edge, in the Internet of Things. And we actually started a project to port CryptoMove to embedded devices, um, embedded Linux devices like drones, cameras and sensors. And we were working on that when NIST and uh, DHS uh, had a smart cities conference in Washington DC and they invited us out because they knew of our work and we realized that all of our technology could be applied in the smart cities context that these are the same systems that we are securing already in other avenues and so we started conversations with different city CIOs and now we're actually have some pretty exciting projects 
that we're embarking on to help secure smart cities. And, you know, throughout the course of, of this, uh, you know, experience of prototyping the technology, inventing it, and now creating a company around it, we've built a great team. We have um, some fantastic uh, people who have experience building other startups up from zero to over 100 million in revenue, uh, some of the top security startups. And we've gotten a great group of um, investors and financing to help us make this vision a uh, reality. It's a fantastic story, and I love how you're a big family business as well. But in January this year, CryptoMove announced its Series A round of financing led by Social Capital. Uh, can you expand on that as well and advise how it's actually going to help you achieve that vision? Absolutely. So in uh, January, like you mentioned, we announced our latest Series A financing. And the reason for that is in 2017, we saw... Uh, pretty large uptick in traction, signing six-figure contracts with Fortune 100 companies as well as federal agencies in the United States. And we realized that to properly deliver the product for these customers, we would need to grow the team. And so we set out fundraising last year and met uh, many of the you know best uh, investors for enterprise and IoT technology. And we're really excited about social capital because they have a history of investing in hard technology and robotics. They're, they have portfolio companies like Sail Drone, which is revolutionizing how you know oceans are mapped and, and researched. They've uh, invested in some of the fastest growing uh, security and enterprise software companies like Netscope and Slack. And so we're excited to partner with them on CryptoMove Series A. Now, with that behind us, what we're doing is we're taking that capital and investing it primarily into R&D, actually, uh, rather than um, too much sales and marketing. Uh, that's why you're talking to me. I'm still doing most of the marketing myself. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you know, we're going to essentially um, increase the size of our engineering team and increase the velocity of our development to take this core crypto move platform that we have and plug it in to different cameras, different sensors, street lights, and things like that. And that's really what um, our financing was uh, for. Now, I know it's very early days still at the moment, but have you been able to secure any big global partnerships, And especially because you're going after these smart cities? So I would imagine that global partnerships are key to the future success. Absolutely. Um, the interesting thing about smart cities is you have a disparate set of technologies that are being worked on in you know many places all around the world. And there isn't a dominant design yet for how to develop, for instance, a smart lights or a smart grid or smart water program. And that's why it's so important for cities to partner with each other and for technology companies like CryptoMove to develop partnerships to establish these global dominant designs. And we have quite a few um, in the works, and we've been approached by cities ranging from um, in Southeast Asia to the United States, uh, Europe, all across the world, to share with them our learnings and our technologies. We do have a great advisory board, which includes some of the top experts in data protection and cybersecurity. Um, so we've partnered with head of security at Google, Gerhard Eschelbeck, as well as the um, CISO at Newstar, who's involved in a lot of IoT and smart city um, initiatives, Tom Pageler. And we're actually actively working on embarking on a few smart cities and smart lights projects, which we'll be able to speak about um, later this year. Uh, and, you know, we can say, at least, you know, in terms of our technology, um, we have been working with the Department of Homeland Security and their Silicon Valley Innovation Program to further leverage and um, deploy our technology in different sensor and camera systems. And that's a partnership we can discuss because um, they've actually uh, publicized it themselves. But in many cases as well, when you're talking about cybersecurity, when you're talking about uh, data protection, you know, not everybody wants to reveal what kind of lock they buy on their door. So many times our partnerships are more under the radar, if that makes sense. Absolutely. And, and in the name as well, their crypto move, I've got to ask, is there a token behind this as well? And how does that work? Uh, that's a good question. So if you think back to our company and 
the fact that we were actually working on this for five years in stealth before launching in uh, last January, uh, crypto back then uh, was associated with cryptography. Um, and, you know, over the course of the last few years, it's it's become synonymous with cryptocurrency. Yeah. Um, and so a lot of people think that uh, our company uh, is a token or a cryptocurrency company. We actually don't have one. However, um, there are some very interesting applications for distributed ledgers in smart cities that CryptoMove can help to protect. So, for instance, um, we've seen projects and initiatives where organizations are building blockchain applications, but they need a safe and secure way to manage the keys. It's one of the biggest challenges with a blockchain application. And CryptoMove as a data vault that shreds, splits, fragments data can also do that with keys. And so we actually see more and more uh, blockchain initiatives coming to us and asking us, can we use CryptoMove for key security or key protection or to securely store something that is off the chain. So that's sort of how we interplay with this ecosystem. Um, there's a, you know, some blog posts we've put up on our blog about blockchain, um, and there's certainly some overlap, but we don't have a token, although we get asked quite a bit if we plan to do an ICO um, just because of the natural um, synergy with our technology. But that's not uh, the direction that we've gone. Cool. Uh, in that space where we're talking about ICOs and cryptos and uh, that whole area there is there anything that excites you or equally concerns you and just leaves you hanging back a little bit on that front yeah absolutely i mean it's interesting because our seed round for crypto move when we raised the first um two million in capital was led by tim draper and draper as you may know is one of the largest investors and um, backers of cryptocurrency worldwide so we're very familiar with the space i think that the things that are exciting about cryptocurrency and tokenization are the way that it can essentially decentralize the existing centralized system. So you can take a city, which can often be very centralized and how it manages data and systems and services, and decentralize it. Or you can have cities that can now collaborate with each other and share data uh, using distributed ledgers or ensure the security or um, integrity of supply chains. And so those things are all um, very exciting, although they come with uh, challenges. Uh, there's no question about that. So what, as for you guys at CryptoMove, is there anything else that you can share with us today or anything on the horizon or your big plans for the next 18 months? Yeah, so we will, um, you know, we have quite a few uh different irons in the fire. Um, we just moved into a new office in the Bay Area. Um, we've recently, uh, in the last few months, we've started working on projects in Europe with some of the large banks there. And over the next six, eight months, I think you'll see a lot of movement around smart cities and security. The, the interesting thing is that this year, NIST has declared that for global smart cities challenge the top priority is cybersecurity. And so NIST is this organization in the federal government that helps set standards for security and cryptography. They've been sponsoring smart cities initiatives and in what is called the global smart cities challenge. Now last year it was all about connectivity, cameras, sensors, making things work fast and efficient. Whereas this year, the focus is all about cybersecurity and, and making that part of the core architecture. CryptoMove was uh, just invited to start participating in that program. And so over the next few months, I think you'll see more and more coming out on how smart cities are starting to think about cybersecurity and specifically in the realm of data protection as they start collecting more and more data on their citizens and the need to ensure that that data doesn't fall into the wrong hands. Excellent. Well, if there is any CIOs listening anywhere in the world that are really interested in this topic, can you just remind them of where they can find you online or even contact your team just if they've got any questions about the topics we've raised today? Absolutely. Well, I am available at any time. It's pretty easy. It's just mike at cryptomove.com. The best way to contact us is via our website, 
where we have quite a bit of information. And we also have a Twitter account at CryptoMove, which where we are very active in discussions with uh, CIOs and discussing trends around data protection. And we always welcome conversations to learn about smart city initiatives and especially the challenges that cities are facing as they bring all of these devices and start connecting them, and particularly from a data protection perspective. Well, a huge thanks for coming on the show today, Mike. I think every city everywhere in the world, uh, all authorities are adding those extra sensors, those extra cameras, and they have been doing for years. And there is slight vulnerabilities there now. And like you said, it's all about securing them now and concentrating on cyber security. So I wish you the best of luck for the future. I think you've got something very valuable on your hands here for cities all over the world. But more than anything, just a big thank you for coming on and sharing that story. Great. Well, I appreciate your time, Neil, and uh, thank you very much. I love how Crypto Moves decentralized edge can actually secure data protection and fundamentally change the way that data is secured in smart cities. Crypto Move protects data with dynamic movement, mutation, fragmentation, and then re encryption. And it's easy to see why Crypto Move is a startup with paying customers in Fortune 100, Fortune 50 and equally Fortune 20, as well as those federal agencies such as the Department of Homeland Security. In a nutshell, we're all waking up to the fact that security is now everyone's business. Do you have any insights in this area? As always, tweet me at Neil C. Hughes. Send me a quick email to techblogwriter at outlook.com because I am the easiest guy in the world to find online, even if I am 30,000 feet in the air. So if you want to share your expertise or just say hello, you know how to find me. So all that's left for me to say, gang, is enjoy the rest of your day, wherever you are, wherever you're listening to this. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.